Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to use pencil marking to help you keep track of possible candidates while you're solving a puzzle. You don't have to use a pencil, of course, especially if you're solving Sudoku on a computer or a phone app, but we still call it pencil marking. Here's a typical computer-based Sudoku puzzle. This is from the New York Times website. It's free and there's a new puzzle every day. So to place candidates in a cell using this program, you click here where it says candidate and then you click on the number you want. Now watch what happens when I click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You see it places the candidates in specific locations in the cell. The top row has the 1, 2, 3, the middle row has the 4, 5, 6, and the bottom row has the 7, 8, and 9. This is helpful since it keeps the candidates in their own unique location in the cell and that creates a pattern making it easier to recognize. You can also click here where it says auto candidate mode and all the candidates will be filled in for you but I don't like to use that option since it takes all the thinking and fun out of solving a puzzle in my opinion. But if you're solving an extremely difficult puzzle then this option is great to use once you're stuck. But even then I like to work through the candidates myself and not use the auto mode. Different websites or apps call candidates different things. Here you can see the LA Times uses the terms pen and pencil. Pen is for placing numbers. Pencil is for candidates. The LA Times site also has an auto candidate mode. Click on assist and then show candidates for grid and all the possible candidates for each cell will be automatically filled in. You can also do this for just one cell instead of filling in the entire grid. Is this a good idea to use the auto fill in mode? Your answer may be yes, but for me the answer is definitely no. I like to work through the logic of a puzzle and place the candidates as I go along solving the puzzle. If I let the app auto fill in the candidates, I find myself thinking differently. If you're a beginner, then I suggest you work through the logic on your own. Don't use the auto fill mode and you'll get the hang of these puzzles more quickly by working it out without assistance from the computer. My humble opinion. So let's take a look at a puzzle and see how we might go about placing candidates. Here's a puzzle from the New York Times and let's start with the number one. Looking for a block that does not contain a one, we see block two needs a one and we can use intersecting lines from the previous lesson to eliminate all the cells in block two except these two cells. So let's put a little number one here and here. So now we have two possible cells that the number one can go into in this three by three block. These are called candidates. When there are only two possible cells a number can go into in a three by three block, we have a better chance of solving that number more quickly. All we have to do is prove one of the numbers to be false and then the other has to be true. So if we can eliminate one of these from being the number one, then the other cell would have to be the number one. To illustrate, let's now look at block three. And since we have a one in row C and we have ones in columns eight and nine, the only place a one can go in block three is here in row B, column seven. By placing the one here, we now have eliminated this cell. This cell can no longer be a one. Therefore, the other cell must be the number one. Do you see how that works? It worked because there were only two cells that the one could go in. And if one cell was proved to be false, then the other had to be true. This wouldn't work if we had three possible cells, only if we have two. Now all the ones are placed in the top rank. Let's move on to the number two and all the twos are already placed in the top rank. So let's move on to three. There's only one three and it's in block two. So blocks one and three need a three. Let's look at block one first. And since there's a three in row A, the only place a three can go in block one is in row C in one of these two cells. And we can't tell which one. It could be in either cell. So let's pencil mark in threes into these two cells. What about block three? Can we pencil mark in threes there? Well, a three can't go in row A since there's already a three in row A. So the three can go in rows B and C, or can it? No, it can't go in row C anymore. We can see that we pencil marked in threes in row C, block one. 
that's the only place in block 1 that the 3 can go into, so it has to go in row B, and so we can pencil mark in 3's here and here. Now you're probably going to say, wait, there's a 3 in column 8, so a 3 can't go there, so the 3 must be here. And you're right, but when I was doing this puzzle, somehow I missed that 3 down there, and that's okay, I'll catch it later. It's fine if you don't see something at first and catch it later. It's only a problem if you place a number in the wrong cell, then the whole puzzle is messed up. But if you just don't see something, that doesn't mess up the puzzle, and you will eventually see it. And that's what happened here. So I'm going to leave these threes penciled in, and please pretend you don't see the three down in column 8. Now let's look at the number 4. We have a 4 in blocks 1 and 2, so we need to place 1 in block 3. And since the two fours are in rows A and B, we need to place one in row C. And so we can pencil mark the fours in here and here. But this time I'm not sleeping, and looking down column 7, I see there's a four there. So that eliminates one of the fours we just penciled in, and that means that this cell has to be the number four. Now let's move on to the number five. It only appears in block 3. So we need to place a 3 in blocks 1 and 2. Let's start with block 1. If we look at block 1, we see that the 5 can't be placed in row C, since there is already a 5 in row C, and it can't be placed in row B, because all those cells are filled in already. So the 5 can either go here or here, and so we can pencil mark that in. Now let's look at block 2, and we see that row A is already filled in, and row C can't have the 5, since there is already a 5 in row C, so the 5 must go either here or here. But then looking down column 5, we see there is a 5 already in column 5, so that eliminates this cell, and we can place the 5 here. What about the number 6? Well, we have a 6 in block 1, here. So in block 2, a 6 can either go here or here, so let's pencil mark that in. Now in block 3, where can a 6 go? And it can go either here, here, or here. The 6 can go into 3 cells, so should we pencil mark it in? Many Sudoku solvers, including myself, like to follow a rule, at least at the beginning of solving a puzzle, a rule of pencil marking in candidates if they can go into only 2 cells in a 3x3 three three block. In this case, the 6 can go into 3 cells, so that would not conform. This type of notation is referred to as Snyder notation, named after 3-time World Sudoku Champion Thomas Snyder, who used this method of pencil marking. It's your choice, of course, whether to restrict your notation this way, or to keep the 3 6's. It's your puzzle to solve any way you want. But if the goal is to solve the puzzle in the most efficient way possible, then using Snyder notation gives you an edge definitely at the beginning of the solving process, since you can very easily place a number once you've eliminated the other number. Take a look here in block 2. We have two cells filled in with 6's, and if I eliminate this 6, then the other 6 must be true, because there are only two possible locations for the 6 in block 2. So if one is false, then the other must be true. But here in block 3, we have three locations for the number 6, so if we eliminate one, then we still don't know which of the other two 6's are true. So I'm going to erase these 6's and continue solving this puzzle using only Snyder notation, that is only using pencil markings when the possible candidates can be in two, and only two cells in a 3x3 three three block. Let's move on to the number 7. It appears once in the top rank, and that's in block 3. Now in block 2, it can go either here or here, so let's pencil mark that in. But wait, if we look down column 6, we see there's a 7 there. So that eliminates this cell, and therefore the 7 has to be placed here. And now the 6 goes here, and block 2 is done. Now you remember we have three possible locations for the number 6 in block 3. But now, since we just placed a 6 in block 2, so that eliminates this cell, and we can go back to block 3 and pencil mark in, using Snyder notation, the two remaining possible locations for the number 6 in this block, and that's here or here. Now take a look at these two cells. We have a matching pair. 
a 3 and a 6 that can only go into these two cells in block 3. That's great because if we place the 3 then we know right away the other cell will be the 6. And if we place the 6 right away we'll know the other cell is the 3. I've seen this referred to as a pair and also as twins but I'll stay with the term matching pair since it seems to describe this best. You will see in later lessons that the matching pair is very useful in eliminating other cells in the same unit, sometimes called a house, that is a row, column, and block. More about that in a later video. Back to the number 7. There are two 7's in the top rank, so we need to place a 7 somewhere in block 1, either here or here. So let me pencil that in. But now if we look right here in column 2, there's a 7, so this has to be the 7, and now this has to be the 3. Do you see how pencil marking in the 3's earlier helped me to easily place the 3 once the other 3 was eliminated? And now row C has 8 cells completed, so if we use counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we see it's the number 9 that's missing. Looking at block 1, we see there are two cells still empty. One of them is a 5, and the other must be a 9, since there are only two numbers still missing from block 1. So we can pencil mark these in as 5 and 9. Again, this is called a matching pair, and we will talk more about matching pairs in an upcoming lesson. But for now, think about the 5 and 9 as the two numbers that need to be placed into one of those two cells. One is a 5, and one is a 9. We don't know which is which yet. Now if we look across that same row, row A, we see that the only other number that's missing in the row is 8. That means that this cell must be an 8. And now we have taken the top rank as far as we can, so let's move to the middle rank. Starting with the number 1, there are two 1's in this rank, so we need one more 1, and it has to go somewhere in block 4 not in rows D or E, there's already ones there, so it has to go here in row F, either here or here, but it can't go here since there's a 1 in column 3, so the 1 has to go here. Now for the number 2, there are no 2's in this rank, so let's move on to the number 3. There's one 3, that eliminates a 3 in row F, and then using intersecting lines, we can eliminate columns 2 and 3, so the 3 can only go here. And in block 5, we can now place the 3 by eliminating row F and columns 5 and 6, so the 3 has to go here in row D, column 4. Next, the number 4, we have a 4 here and here, so the 4 must go here. 5, we have all three 5's. Let's move on to 6. We have one 6 here in block 4. Where can it go in block 5? Well, it can go here or here, but because there is already a 6 in column 6, then it can only go here. Now, looking at block 6, the 6 can go in two locations. So, using Snyder notation, since there are only two locations the 6 can go, let's pencil mark that in. Next is the number 7. We have a 7 in block 4, row D. So the 7 in block 5 must be in row F, and since there is a 7 already in column 6, then the only place the 7 can go in is here. And now that we've placed the 7 in block 5, it's easy to place the 7 in block 6. It can't go in rows D or F, since we already have 7s there, so it must go in row E. But there's already a 7 in column 9, so it must go in column 7. Now we have 6's penciled into these two cells, but once we place the 7's here, the 6 can be placed here. And now we have to look up here in block 3. The candidates we penciled in earlier can now be resolved. Since we have a 6 here in column 9, then this 6 can no longer be true. So the 6 must go here and the 3 here. You see how pencil marking helps us to remember what goes where? and using Snyder notation helps to resolve cells more quickly than if you wrote down all the numbers in the whole grid, it would be much harder to draw conclusions. Moving on, the number 8, there are no 8's, 9, there are two 9's, so the third 9 has to go here, that's the only place it can go in block 4. 
So we're done with the middle rank. We've worked our way through the numbers 1 to 9. But before I move down to look at the bottom rank, I notice that there are only two empty cells in each of blocks 4, 5, and 6. And I can use counting to see what's missing and pencil mark those numbers in. Here in block 4, there's a 2 and 8 missing. So we have a 2-8 matching pair. And if we look down, we see a 2 here. So this can't be the 2, so it must be the 8, and this is the 2. And now block 4 is done. Let's see if we can solve block 5 the same way using counting. What's missing? 1, 2, 2 is missing. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 again. So the number 8. So these cells are either 2 or 8. I can't solve that, so let's move over to block 6, where there are also two empty cells. And again, it's the 2 and the 8. But now we can eliminate this cell as a possible 2. If we look up in column 7, we see there's already a 2 there. And if we look up column 9, we see an 8 there. So this cell has to be the 8 and this the 2. And now that resolves this matching pair in block 5. This can't be an 8, so it has to be a 2. And that makes this the 8. Now the middle rank is solved. Let's move down to the bottom rank starting with the number 1. We have a 1 in block 9. Using intersecting lines, we can eliminate all the cells except this one, so a 1 goes here. What about block 8? Can we place a 1 someplace? Well, let's see. We have a 1 here and a 1 here in column 4 and here in column 5, so the 1 has to be in column 6 here. And now we have all three 1s placed. Now let's look at the 2s. We have a 2 here and a 2 here in column 5, so the only place a 2 can go is here. Now let's look at block 9. We need a 2 in the last row, but it can't go in column 7 or 9 since there are already 2s there, so it has to go here in column 8. Columns 7, 8, and 9 only have one cell left in each of those columns, so we can use counting to fill in the missing number. In column 7, the missing number is 6. In column 8, the missing number is 9. And in column 9, the missing number is 4. We were up to the number 3. All the 3's are done. So moving on to 4, we have two 4's here and here. So we need a 4 here in block 8. And here is the only cell it can go into. So now the 4 is done. Next is the number 5. We have a 5 here and here, so there must be a 5 in one of these two cells in block 7. And since there's already a 5 in column 1, then the 5 must go here in column 2. Now look what this has done for us. It resolves the 5-9 matching pair we have here in block 1. Since we just placed a 5 here in column 2, then this cell can no longer contain a 5, and therefore it must be the 9 and the other cell is therefore the 5. And now we see that column 3 only has one number missing, and it's the number 7, so let's put that there. And now these last two rows also have one number missing. This row is missing the 9, and this one is missing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the number 8. And now this column is missing the number 6, and this column is missing the number 8. And now the puzzle is solved. You can see how useful pencil marking is, and especially if you're using Snyder notation and only mark in candidates when they appear in two and only two locations within a 3x3 three three block. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the pattern of completed segments as another strategy to help you solve Sudoku puzzles. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to help my channel grow. I really appreciate it, and I hope you learned something.